A very good morning from the Conrad Soul. After three long weeks on the road, it is time to head home back to Vienna via Frankfurt in Lufthansa Business Class. We'll be flying in the 747-400 in the upper deck. So if that sounds good, stick around and enjoy the video. We booked a one-way flight from Seoul Incheon to Vienna via Frankfurt. In total, we paid 106,500 miles and more miles and 567 euros for two people. Due to the companion award through my senator status, the mile price of the second ticket was 50% off. Usually, a one-way flight from Asia to Europe costs 71,000 miles per person. The cash rate would have been 4,194 euros, resulting in a 3.4 cent per mile value. We departed the Conrad Seoul in a regular taxi and headed to the airport. Check-in was a breeze since many premium counters were open. After security and immigration, I wanted to go lounge hopping. But the Singapore Airlines lounge was still closed due to COVID and so we headed to the Asiana Business Class Lounge instead. This lounge had everything you could want from multiple seating options including larger tables for groups and families, private single pods and even some massage chairs. Next to the yummy hot food at the buffet, there was also a self-serve bar with an automatic beer draft system where the beverage fills up from the bottom to the top. And finally, lots of apron views. Everything was fresh, new and kept clean. A very nice place to wait before your flight. After enjoying the lounge, we made our way to the far end of the terminal and caught a glimpse of the beautiful Boeing 747-400 that would take us to Frankfurt. Lufthansa still flies both the 747-400 and the 747-8, the latter being the much newer aircraft that is also equipped with first class. The Dash 400 variants are much older and only offer economy, premium economy and business class. The business class layout in this aircraft is a bit controversial as it partially has a 232 configuration. While it's nice for families of three, having a middle seat in business class is definitely not the standard anymore. We escaped the huge lower deck cabin by reserving our seats in the upper deck. It's much more private up here in the 2-2 configuration and I specifically chose row 84 since it was a bulkhead with larger footwells and not so close to the restroom which is located in the front of the aircraft. These seats won't win any awards but are great for couples and you get up to 4 windows per seat. Once in my seat I could check out the many amenities waiting for me. The pillow was plush and decently sized. The blanket wasn't too substantial but did its job for this very long day flight of nearly 13 hours. There was a mattress pad, more on that later. And surprising for me, slippers in Lufthansa business class. The amenity kit is wrapped in a collectible, reusable shopping bag. A really nice idea and I still use it, however the print does wear off after some use unfortunately. This is the larger bulkhead footrest with space underneath for a small bag or backpack. Before departure, we received some champagne as a welcome drink and a hot towel. Now let's check out this unique upper deck seat in more detail. Next to the non-adjustable IFE screen, which was better than expected considering the plane's age, was a coat hook and a holder for your eyeglasses. The window seat has some extra storage or counter space by the window, a unique feature to this aircraft type. Below the literature pocket was the only enclosed storage that housed the amenity kit and a water bottle. The middle console already had the noise cancelling headphones connected and behind them underneath the armrest were two USB slots. Between the two seats, two universal power outlets were located. On the top of the middle console was the drink tray and seat controls. Below the flap was the IFE remote with a mouse pointer and the fold-out tray table that was difficult to deploy with one hand. It's not the largest table, 
There is a bit of give when pushed at the end, but it can be swiveled out of the way to be able to leave your seat easier. Lowering the armrest also helps if you want to get up. Finally, this plane is not equipped with individual air vents. After takeoff, another round of drinks were served, accompanied by some nuts. The appetizer was served individually with our choice of bread. I had the steak as the main dish. It was well done, but having the sauce did help a bit. I went all in on dessert and cheese, and the meal was polished off with two pralines. After dinner, I headed to the only lavatory on the upper deck. In theory, there are two bathrooms, but one was reserved for the crew. It was a very tight squeeze considering the size of this aircraft, but it was stocked with plenty of amenities. Of course, you can head down to the lower deck and use the restrooms there. Since Russian airspace was off limits, the flight time was longer than usual, at almost 13 hours. Man, was I glad I could turn my seat into a bed. On the right side, you can see the mattress pad, which is simply laid on top of the seat and can't be secured in any way. I find the padding on Lufthansa's seat quite comfortable, more so than EVA Air or Swiss, for example. The footwell was not very constricting, and since I sleep on my side, I had no issues with the width of the bed. If you like this video so far, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. Thanks! The amenity kit contained socks, an eye mask, covers for the headphones, moisturizer and lip balm, a toothbrush and toothpaste. The IFE selection was decent. I found enough entertainment for the long flight. Wi-Fi was also offered at 29 euros or $35 for the whole flight. Before landing, we received another hot Asian dish, which was delicious. And when the sun finally set, we landed in Frankfurt. The crew on this flight was friendly enough, but not overly proactive. The purser did strike up a nice conversation with us before takeoff and checked up on us during the flight. The 747-400 is a rarity nowadays, and I'm glad I got to try it and also lose my 747 upper deck virginity. It's definitely the place to be on the plane, and if you're traveling together, the dated seat configuration is not a big deal. Overall, it was a pleasant experience to fly Lufthansa. This was the last long-haul flight of our around-the-world honeymoon. Find out how we started off in style on Emirates First Class by clicking on this video. With that said, thanks for watching, happy travels, and see you soon.